Neil Batale here. I run the website neilian.com about physics and math. In this video, I'm going to talk about the relation between power and energy. So there are actually quite a few different kinds of energy. The first one I'm going to talk about is called gravitational potential energy. It's the potential energy that you have from going upward, basically opposing the force of gravity. So if you walk up some stairs, you're going to have some potential energy that's equal to m, the mass, times g, the acceleration due to gravity, times h, which is the height, a distance that you go upward. And we call this potential energy, but specifically gravitational potential energy. You can convert different types of energy to other types of energy. So for example, you can convert gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy. So if the person was up on those stairs and they jumped off, then at the very bottom, right before they hit the ground, they'd have a kinetic energy of one half times m times v squared. So m standing for the mass, v standing for the velocity squared. The amount of energy they had at the top is gonna to be equal to the amount of energy they have at the bottom right before impact. So the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. So those are two types of energy. You can also have energy due to a spring. You can have energy because of heat. There are a lot of different types of energy. And the word work is actually closely associated with the concept of energy. They have the same unit of joules. Let's go to a different example, which is probably more familiar. If you have something and it moves from one position to another position, we say it's displaced. It travels a certain distance in meters, and we use the variable x to describe distance. But if you describe something moving from one position to another, it also takes an amount of time to travel. Nothing moves instantaneously. Even light travels at the speed of light, which is very fast, but it's not infinitely fast. So if we describe the same situation, we see that we have a distance, but we also have a velocity because there's definitely a time involved for anything to move. So the units of distance are meters, the units of velocity are meters per second. So it's the distance divided by the time. So we can compare meters to meters per second, and we can also compare joules to joules per second. So the difference between meters and meters per second is we're dividing by seconds. The difference between joules and joules per second is we're also dividing by seconds. But the thing is we call the units of power watts. So one watt is equal to one joule per second. We don't have a different unit for velocity. We just describe it as meters per second. But it's really the same concept. We're taking meters per second, we're taking joules per second. So the difference between distance and velocity is the same as the distance between energy and power. So meters versus meters per second, joules versus joules per second, which are also known as watts. If you multiply a velocity by time, you get distance. We also use the letter x. I'm using the letter d here. If you multiply a power by time, you get energy. So you can also change those equations around. If you take distance and you divide by time, you get velocity. If you take energy and divide by time, you get power. 